So hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to my presentation on predictive analytics for e-commerce success. My name is uh, Bill Dunn, I'm the president of Dunn Solutions, and I hope you're having a good day and getting lots of great information today. Uh, in the presentation today, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, this uh, hype around AI and machine learning and trying to understand how we can really apply this uh, to real life marketing opportunities. And then at the end, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, two offers we have at our virtual booth uh, for doing some real machine learning with your data uh, around uh, your company's uh, products and, and prospects. So a little bit about Dunn Solutions. Uh, Dunn Solutions, we like to say we deliver velocity to business. And if you remember your high school physics, uh, velocity is not just a speed, it's speed and direction. And uh, we deliver speed by automating business processes. And then we uh, help you in going in the right direction by using analytics. And so if you have analytics and a speed and direction, you end up with velocity. And a lot of the marketing automation and the e-commerce automation uh, focuses on speed, but you also need those analytics. So why is that true? Well, I believe that there's a virtuous cycle of customer engagement, you know, which combines all of these different aspects to really get what you want. There's analytics where you're analyzing the data that is uh, coming from uh, the interactions that your customers have with you. And those can be online and offline. Then there's marketing automation to take those interactions and the uh, data and, uh, and segment the customers so you can message them appropriately. And finally, there's the e-commerce platform where you transition that messaging into revenue. And if you do a good job there, uh, you take your data from the e-commerce platform, put it back into the analytics and uh, continue in a cycle and uh, hopefully uh, drive more revenue. So today we're gonna be spending a lot of time talking about the analytics pieces of this, but it's all part of a, an ecosystem that needs to all work together. So big question, how does predictive analytics with you know, also known as uh, AI and machine learning, how does it really work in marketing? Yeah. You know, we've heard a lot about AI and machine learning over the past few years. And in fact, you know, every single tool, you know, says they have some sort of embedded machine learning or AI. And, but, you know, but, but what really is it? And, and how do we use it when we're engaging with customers? And it's important to note that we can use this information, machine learning, before and after the sale. So it's not just something that happens on the website, it's also part of a longer strategy of using data throughout all of your marketing and sales activities. So the first thing I want to understand is what it's not. So when we talk about predictive analytics, so we say analytics a lot, people come back to us and say, oh, we use analytics, we, we use Google Analytics. And I'm like, well, it's not really, no, it's not Google Analytics. Uh, predictive analytics is a much wider type of uh, type of discussion. and uh, in a lot of places, the machine learning, AI, predictive analytics, they all really are the same thing. It's just different ways of describing how we're coming up with our models and scores. They're just different nuances. So the neat thing about predictive analytics as a whole is that you're using data from all over the enterprise. So you're using data maybe from your ERP, from your inventory, from web clicks on your web page, maybe from in-store purchases. Uh, through loyalty programs, you're using all of that data to try to understand more about your customer. It's not just focused only on web clicks. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand our customers so that we can help them achieve their goals. And, and we do that through the use of this data. So what's the difference between predictive analytics and like traditional analytics or reporting? And we like to think of traditional analytics as something that happened in the past. You're saying, how did we do? Oh, here's a report. We sold this much. Um, so it's kind of like a review of what happened. When we think about predictive analytics or machine learning, it's more about what's going to happen. Predictive analytics tells you what to do. Traditional analytics tells you what happened. And so today's focus is more on, on predictive analytics, telling you what to do. So there's all sorts of different predictive analytics solutions that are out there. And uh, we help our customers with these solutions, but uh, you know, we're gonna talk about a few of them today, but these are the kind of the core ones. Marketing mix, which is understanding where to spend your money, and what channels. So you're marketing on TV, radio, print, postcard, uh, uh, LinkedIn ads, Google ads, you know, all these different channels. 
what's the optimal way to you, for you to divide that money? Market basket analysis, which I'm sure everyone's heard of at this point, but what things go with other things? So which, what things should you sell together to get a bigger, you know, kind of a uh, bigger sale out of a customer when they come visit your site? And of course, demand forecasting, understanding about inventory and how much to buy, churn, understanding when customers might actually be leaving you or thinking about leaving you. You want to catch them before that happens. Um, promotional pricing, which is about giving the right price at the right time to get somebody to buy something, which is not just wholesale discounting. It's trying to find the right exact price point. And doing that properly can result in extra hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of, of revenue, depending on, you know, on what you're selling. And then just generically probability models of how certain customers might buy or not buy something. So these are all different examples of predictive analytics solutions. Um, so along the entire customer journey, there's lots and lots of opportunities to use predictive analytics. And if you're not using predictive analytics today, I wouldn't say, oh my God, I gotta do everything. It's really about choosing a few things that really will have a high ROI and will be a quick win that will allow you to uh, demonstrate the value of using data and predictive analytics in your organization, and then slowly adding more and more things as it makes sense within your, within your company. So in the pre-engagement stage, I'm just gonna give a couple examples. Predictive analytics can help you decide which marketing tactics are more effective, uh, determining who to target in and when, and then helping you understand um, which channels to use. So as an example, um, you know, understanding where you've advertised and how that affects the actual purchase is very important because a lot of times you're just putting money into different channels at the end of the day, somebody buys something, but you're not sure how much money you should have spent in each one of these channels. And using data and analytics, we can help figure that out, even combining offline and online channels. So for example, we had a client that was allocating about $7 million to their marketing channel. And they really were using all sorts of tactics, TV, radio, paid search, everything but they never formally measured how much each one of these channels impacted their sales. So they really didn't know whether they were spending too much or too little in each one of those channels. So what we, we did is we did an exercise where we modeled it out and we've got kind of, this is sort of the, a quick result. Um, their current spend here on uh, paid search was in the green and their current spend on radio is sort of in this orange. So you could see that although they were spending quite a bit on paid search, it really was nowhere near optimal. In fact, the optimal space to be spending was down around here. So they should have been spending less on paid search than they were, that, that extra dollars they were spending were not returning the value. The same thing um, with the radio advertising. They were spending all the way up here, oh, I'm sorry, they were spending too little, excuse me, but they really should be spending up here. So a lot of times what we come to is a conclusion about you don't need to spend more money. It's more about reallocating the money that you're spending to get the optimal result. And so how, how did we, it, it do? Well, by changing some of these allocations, we were able to generate an extra $2.4 million in revenue for the company using the exact same budget that they had before. So again, we didn't change their budget. We just reallocated their spend in the right channels and we were able to generate more revenue. And so this is just one example of how predictive analytics and modeling can really help uh, without spending a ton more money. And the engagement was nowhere near the cost of the revenue increase. So it was a super high return on investment. So on the flip side is what happens, you know, after, you know, they've already purchased and you can uh, figure out all sorts of things in how you get them to come back and purchase more. So the biggest driver of additional sales through marketing is personalization. And everybody is thinking about how do we make our messaging more personalized to our customers? Well, data helps you do that. And so the challenge there is to start adapting to a data culture within the organization. Start capturing all of your customer interactions, you know, your web page views, the categories, the product views, how many emails they open, call center interactions, everything and get that all consolidated into a single data set, 
in a single data platform. And we, we help companies do that. So you have some sort of basis. And then once you've got all that data, you can start using predictive models to segment your customers into the areas that they are most interested in and help define what they should be purchasing from you. So finally, the next step is use the results of those analytics and the results of that segmentation to personalize your emails, your offers, and your product pages on a customer by customer basis, instead of just blasting out the same message to every single customer. And so you take these segments, you can then define unique customer journeys for each one of those segments, and then you can create a targeted journey uh, instead of a generic journey. So I'm not saying you have to go down to each individual, although you could with certain offers, but at the very least, you can understand segments of individuals and start creating messaging, emails, even promotional offers that are targeted specifically to that segment. And I guarantee you, you will have a much, much better uh, return on your marketing investment. So when you're using email, there's different email strategies. A lot of folks start out with this wide burst strategy where they're just sending out emails to everybody on their list. But I think custom segments eventually is the right way to go. And so when is it appropriate to use each one? Well, the wide burst is like when you have a new set of people that you don't know what they're interested in, you don't have any history with them, you kind of want to blanket and see what happens. Once they're starting to interact with your website, we can use segmentation to get them into the right segment and the right journey. And when start, instead of blasting them, we can send them information that's specific to them. The other thing that we're really big fans of is to use triggers, which is like, hey, that person's come back to that page like seven times. Potentially, they're interested in that product. Let's send them some emails about that rather than sending out the generic email that we send out every month. So um, how do you kind of get into that? Well, a lot of times we see that clients um, you know, have difficulty in you know, going from that's cool to we want to do it. Does it really work? Um, and so we want to make it easy for you to see if it really works. Um, if you stop by our virtual booth and uh, talk to one of the folks there at Dunn Solutions, uh, we've got two special offers only for folks who are attending this show. We will build one of two different uh, models for you, for your business using your data, so you can see if this stuff actually works for you. So you can, we'll either do a customized pricing model which is really important, especially if you are trying to kind of work through that holiday season and you might have things left over that you want to then move out the door. Um, or we will help you with a targeted cross-selling segmentation strategy where you've got customers that are buying one type of product. What's, what should you be offering them in your email to get them to come and buy more? So either of those two things are uh, very valuable and, uh, and guaranteed to generate more opportunity and, and we're um, open to doing that as a, uh, as a no charge type of engagement in order to show you the value of predictive analytics. So um, I hope that you found this interesting and learned a little bit more about uh, predictive analytics and how it could be used in your marketing endeavors. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me directly at bill at dunsolutions.com or uh, stop by our virtual booth and uh, say hi to one of the folks we have there and they can talk to you more about uh, uh, different things that we can do to help you out. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.